Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday. Yes, welcome to oh. Tuesday, and welcome to a twist on a type of video that we definitely do quite frequently on this channel. Yes, we do. So today, we are doing a thrift with us, but I don't know if we can even technically call it thrift, because we're actually just, like, arbitrage sourcing. Mm -hmm. so this will be a source with us, and today, we are going to go to three different consignment stores in our kind of area. Two of them aren't super close but then one of them we go to like all the time. We frequent a lot. Yeah. These are turnstiles, which you may not have in your area, but I assume most of you have heard us talk about them. I think they're in Minnesota and Arizona. Well, and I think they maybe have a few other Midwest, like maybe some of the Dakotas or like Wisconsin might have some. Turnstile is a classic style consignment store. So it's not a buy, sell trade, it's consignment, which what mm -hmm. that means is you bring stuff in, they accept probably more than a buy, sell trade would, Mm -hmm. and you don't get paid until it sells. So like everybody has an account and it keeps track of your items and like whatever you make off of them and you can just get paid out whenever you kind of want. So easy. Buy, sell, trade, which is Play-Doh's Closet, Clothes Mentor, Cylon Core. Core. Mm -hmm. Those ones you bring it in, they buy it right away, you get paid right away. So that's the benefit there. But the benefit at these is they usually take more and you actually usually make more. Oh, it's actually Mother's Day when we're filming this. Don't worry, we have called and texted our everybody's mothers. Everybody's mom got a phone we're gonna, call. We're gonna everybody's see Debbie mom later. Got a Gift. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are watching. Yes, happy, happy late Mother's, mother's Day, Day, everybody. But this is Mother's Day, and they are running a Mother's Day sale of 20% off anything full price. But another thing with this place is because it's normal consignment, actually over time things get marked down. So there might be a handful of stuff in here that is half off because it's just been here for like two months plus. Oh, which is so exciting. stuff that we're really going to be looking for too. There is a Mother's Day clothes mentor sale happening as well, and there is one in the city, but we think we're going to pass on that. Clothes Mentor is more like Style Encore mm -hmm. if you don't have them. It's just a bit more expensive. It doesn't really yeah. have like reseller pricing. Their clearances are pretty good though. Yes. Every now and again, you can find something good in their like 70, 90% off sale. But, like 20% is probably just good better. deal if you're shopping for yourself, but not for us. So we're going to hit up the farthest away one now. Then we're going to go to the second farthest away. And then we're going to go to the one closest to us. Our goals are probably just spring type Spring, stuff. summer garments. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. but we're going to show you what we see. We're going to show stuff that maybe is marked really crazy. We're yes. going to show stuff that we're just passing on, but would love to have gotten if it was a little cheaper, stuff like that. So I hope you guys are excited. A lot of people have asked us to do these for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to do one I'm for you. Excited. Hopefully you find some like really bougie stuff, like an investment piece that's like Ooh, super nice or something. That would be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. So let's go in. This is the home store over here, and then this is the clothing. Most of the turnstiles have them combined, but this one for some reason is two separate buildings. We'll probably still check out both, but we'll at least show you the clothing. I thought that Ryan was gonna hop on this BBY2K jacket. I actually really liked the pattern and the puff sleeves, and it was half off, but he told me that he only really does the strictly Depop stuff at the bins, so I guess not. Next, I moved on to the dresses. Here's the sign advertising the sale. There are a lot of dresses right now, and I also want to show you guys this example of a designer tag. They put this on items they think are higher end or more valuable, which can include anthro and free people, and sometimes some questionable finds. I really liked this Kate Spade star dress, but I just can't pay 48 minus 20%. I did find this Fahati, and I kind of wanted to get it, but I don't know, 18 minus 20% is still a little high, especially because it's a sleeveless mini dress, and that's not my favorite style of dress to sell for sure. I also did find this Amanda Uprichard. This is the second time, or maybe third, I've ever found her anywhere. I don't have much luck with her though, so it's not really that exciting when I do spot her stuff. This Lily Pulitzer had a really cute print, but I don't really like to sell the plain t-shirt dresses as much as I would like the crazy neon pattern ones, so I had to pass on it. Who in the world let this in? It's a faded glory, pilly t-shirt dress. Totally plain, and I think it's an older label. No wonder it's marked down three times. 
About three years ago, I would have been over the moon with this find, a Rebecca Taylor dress with leopard print for only 18 minus 20%, but nowadays, there's no way I could sell it and make that much money. This Lily Pulitzer is more of a style I would like, but I still don't want to pay 23 minus 20%, especially for a mini dress, so I'm gonna have to pass on that one too. And I think I found the ugliest Pam and Jellas ever made. These must be the oldest dresses they ever created. I actually used to have these slides maybe like three or four years ago. They were a pretty good price at 18 even though they were kind of worn, but they were Farm Adidas Originals. This was a really interesting Saturday Sunday anthropology piece, $23 minus the 20%. It's a weird cotton linen blend jumpsuit. I almost got it, but it was a little too pricey. I was really striking out with the dresses, so I turned around to wear the tops, blouses, t-shirts, etc. are. They have a long sleeve blouse section, which is not this section, so I don't exactly know what this is considered, but it just has a lot of tops. While flipping through, I stumbled upon this Johnny Was embroidered top. It was 18 minus 20%, but it's so cute, I gotta get it. I really like selling Draper James, and this colorway is really cute, plus it's under six bucks, so I think I'm going to get this. I also spotted this Free People. I was gonna get it, because it was 1150 minus the 20%, but while filming this clip, I noticed that the sleeves have these weird stains on them, so then I passed. Another BB piece that I'm sure Ryan definitely would get at the bins, but now I know not to show him at the consignment store, but it was a terry cloth jacket. I also found this Rebecca Taylor, another thing I probably would have got a couple years back, but definitely wouldn't get now. This is a spiritual gangster I would have been so excited about two years ago, and now I have to unfortunately skip it, even for $4.75. I thought I had found an Aviator Nation, but no. It was just some weird off-brand 76 something or another. But I did, however, find this The Great sweatshirt, and it is priced at $9.50 minus the 20%. Thank you, Thrift Gods. They had this t-shirt marked as unbranded, though of course right away I knew what it was. This is clearly a Lululemon, and it's $2.25 now, but get this, neither Ryan or I am going to pick it up. I just don't think it's gonna sell. This anthropology piece was really cute and it was down to seven, but as a sleeveless blouse and it seemed a little washed, I had to pass on it, unfortunately. This halogen jacket was adorable, but it was just a little too expensive for me. I definitely did want to get a closer look at that furla and then these vintage coach bags that were in the case. that this top was literally anything else besides Trina Turk. It's beautiful. Trina Turk just doesn't sell for me. And for $37 before the 20%, I just didn't think it was that good of a deal, but it's a beautiful dress nonetheless. This Nine West print was just super cute to me and I thought it was super good for the season. I saw these Tory Burch Miller sandals sitting on the end of a rack. They were in pretty used condition, but I figured if they were a decent price, I would pick them up. Unfortunately, the price was really good, but the condition was worse than I thought it was in, so I did leave these behind. This beautiful Y2K, beautiful pink paisley Betsy Johnson New York dress is the first thing that I ended up picking up. It was about $14 after the discount. It's stunning. It's a maxi dress. I think this is going to do so good in the spring and summer.
This new Tags Good American dress was really cute, but unfortunately I looked up comps and they really didn't go for that much and I really wasn't about to spend upwards to $20 on this. But it was cute though. File this and tailor under 100% would pick up in the bins or if it was like cheaper at a Goodwill. This dress was a little out of my budget, but it was still adorable. I also lunged at this dress when I found it. It is a beautiful Cleo Bella piece, size extra small. This was $18 before the discount. It still had its original belt. It's this stunning orange, kind of like creamy batik looking. This was a very good pickup. This I was definitely considering. There's Jack holding up a cute little J. Crew t-shirt. This is a little Sunday Best from Aritzia dress. It was 16 before the discount, which I thought was just a little bit too much, but it was still really cute. This for people would have been cute if it wasn't for the massive hole in the arm. And for $20, eek, that's a little much. I was absolutely obsessed with this Ted Baker dress. I thought it was really cute. Unfortunately, I thought it was just a little too pricey for me, but it was this really adorable little fit and flare, little black dress, and it was new attacks. Okay, now that I'm actually watching this back, $32 minus 20% probably wasn't a bad price for that, so I may have made a little mistake. I definitely bought this piece on a whim. I did get it. It's this really beautiful kind of like slub cotton looking, really oversized romper. It's actually kind of just like a circle. These really cute little puka shells on the front. The brand is Shalom. I've never heard of this before. It has whatever that meant on the back and then 1100. It was 950 minus the 20%. This Ted Baker top I 100% got. This was only $23 minus the 20%. It was a silk blend and I thought this was such a good style for the summer. These Michael Kors loafers I would have gotten. They were adorable, but they were a little too expensive for me. This IRO top that is conveniently under those Michael Kors loafers is a similar case of something I would have gotten, but it's just a little too expensive. And another one. This is very close to that IRO top as well. It's this beautiful smocked front blue, like poplin little cotton blouse, and it is new tag C New York. One of my absolute favorite brands. I have really, I don't think, ever found anything this new out in the wild, but this is adorable. It was $63, which is just a little bit more than I would like to pay. Here is that furla that was in the case from earlier. I finally got somebody to come over and show it to me. It is beautiful in person. It has the dust bag. It's only $37 minus 20%. So yes, I got it. It's this beautiful little tribal print with this really stunning blue interior. Very obsessed. This bikini, I definitely wanted to look up. I had heard of this brand before. It's called Track and Field. I know they can be kind of expensive, but this one I don't really think was. Then I found this really adorable vintage bikini. The brand is Blue Point. Everything is very clean. Everything is very wonderfully intact. I absolutely love this color and I think this is gonna do good on Depop. This pair of BDG jeans was actually 50% off. They had already marked it at $7 instead of the original 14. I was more than happy to pay that. I thought these were adorable. I love this style for the summer and I think these could do good on Depop as well. These were just kind of an interesting little find. It's a pair of Burberry London jeans. They had the little like odd to the Nova check on the side. They were $53 minus the 20%. I did not get these because of the style, even though I do think they're kind of cute. Okay, I did find some really good pairs of shorts. I found this pair of Abercrombie and Fitch shorts in a size 14. So amazing. I love to find a bigger sized Abercrombie. I found this pair of Levi's shorts that was only $750 minus the 20%. And these were $29 or $30 as well. This really adorable pair of Levi's or Lee's Relax. That was only like four or five bucks. And then all of these amazing jeans. I have some new Wranglers and some really amazing vintage pieces, some Levi's, and then all of these floral jeans. Some wonderful woman donated all of her old lady jeans and I'm so excited. At the front, they have this designer rack, and I'll show you right now why we didn't race up there. So there's old free people, there's really, really basic Lulu tops, more old free people, more old Lulu, they have Splendid, they have Velvet Graham and Spencer. It's just quite underwhelming. Rock and Republic, Sanctuary, Vince, basic pieces. 
I always check, but I definitely don't like race to it. They also have a case of designer or higher end shoes, and these definitely can be better than the designer rack, but unfortunately up here, it's that the prices are too high. There's still definitely a mix of questionable pieces, but I just usually don't want to pay the prices for them. And then they have an accessory and bag case. They had this Louis Vuitton scarf, pretty sure it wasn't real. Walking back away from the designer stuff, I spotted these Zara sandals. They're 14, and with the 20% off, I actually think it's worth it. Then I moved on to the pants and leggings, one of my favorite sections in the store, actually. I've been trying to be a lot pickier with Spanx, but these are 14 and allow the 20% off, and they have this fun tie-dye detail down the side, so I think I gotta get them. This, however, La Sirenus Positano, is an extremely expensive brand, and they did not know what this was, and it was $9.50 minus the discount. I'm so excited. I actually just bought a dress by this brand for like $90 to sell. This was a new brand to me called Olari, but right away, I could just tell it was Anthro. Sure enough, I looked it up and it was from Anthro. For $11.50, I will get a pair of pants this cute. I also found these pants. These were striped, silky feeling pants. These also didn't say Anthro. But again, I could just tell, and I will definitely be picking those up too. These are a pair of a Goldie. The only issue is they're a size 23. I still think I'm gonna get them because they're a great price and they're a really cute style. In the jeans, I also found this pair of driftwood jeans. I have not found driftwood in forever, but I did pass on them because of their price. These pilk road jeans, however, I did pick up. I really like the patchwork detail to them, and they were a great price. This was a pair of R13 jeans, very expensive brand, and I was almost gonna pass on them because I didn't know how well these would sell, but then I Googled them, and they retail for between $570 and $580. That's insane. Then I also found another pair of Spanx, but these are some straight leg white jeans, perfect season for them, so I'm gonna pick them up. Another piece that a couple years back I probably would have grabbed, Madewell Boyfriend Jeans. They're a really cute style and they're only 10 bucks, but I just don't have the luck anymore, so I can't. Also, I don't know if I've ever seen a Nuitag Rock Revival pair of jeans. $170? Wow. This is an adorable pair of free people for only 10. Definitely grabbing those. And this is gonna shock you. These are some Lanval Graphic Logo suede sneakers and they're only 18 minus coupon and neither Ryan or I got them because what are we gonna do with them? I didn't take a long enough clip but let me explain quick so the real real would accept them but they would mark them at maybe 60 70 dollars which means you'll be making almost nothing sneakers that are slip on even if they're designer just don't do as well anymore and I just think they're gonna be a really hard sell so both of us passed Last bundle of stuff before we head out, I found this Drake print for J. Crew. They are giraffes, totally gonna get that. This is a new to me Anthro brand. I don't remember what it's called, but it's really, really, really expensive for some reason. This is a jewels top I'm actually gonna get for Ryan's mom. She loves this brand and it's such a cute top, so I'm definitely gonna get that for her. This is a florid Anthro piece. It's so cheap, so like, I have to. And last, I found a Liberty for J. Crew piece. I love that collection. $192 later, but I think everything I got is great. That is definitely the benefit of shopping at consignment stores and regular thrift stores, is I feel like you do give more thought to everything versus like the bins you're kind of just grabbing. 
At least it's all really good stuff. How much did you spend? I spent $186. Less than me. What did you spend? I thought you said 102. But 192. Well, I expected my total to be like 200. So I was like 102. I did, I did and sure enough, it was like 200. Like, it is going to be pay up of all work or whatever. Yeah, that's watch. what I was just this saying. And I did buy myself a silver bracelet that matches the Tiffany one the jack got me. It's a little <laughs> Gucci first fit one. Oh. And I think it's adorable. That's what I was just saying in a clip was, with this stuff, so much more thought went into it than the bin stuff. Like, I expect all this to sell within oh, yeah. like two, well, three months. Especially like, I'm not gonna say no to an unholy amount of vintage jeans because I love them and the floral stuff is good on Depop anyway. Ugh. Yeah. But I got some good Two spring, bags of peas. Very spring summer, which is good. Now we eat. And I bought the cutest, I'll show you later. It's a little cowboy hat. Um, look yes. at the pins that I'm very I excited almost about. got that too. Heaven on earth. Oh my gosh, we both haven't had naf naf in so long. And it's like our favorite. <laughs> um, yum yum. Refueled, we did bathroom breaks. Yes, we and did. I think we're ready for another turnstile. My yes. wallet is not ready for another 200, so hopefully, we don't find as much at the next one. If I can get out of today without spending $600, that'd be, that'd a wonderful, be great. Wonderful yeah. thing. The last one that we're going to, not this next one, but the last one, is one that we do go to like at least once a week. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. at the last stop, <laughs> we probably not that may many. only have a new pickup or two. Yeah. We tend to like shop around when we're waiting for them to go through our stuff, so we find a lot. Yeah. There. So that one's probably not going to be as heavy as these next, as this next one and the last one. This next one is in a very notable wealthy area in the Twin Cities, a, so they do have a lot of really good stuff. It's a block from our only Louis Vuitton store. Yes, it if is. If that says mm -hmm. anything, so. Their stuff is also very expensive because they know what they have. So I'm expecting a never so we'll full, a speedy. What if we maybe um, a boy bag? Maybe I've gotten a Prada bag here before for like fifty bucks that was on sale. Oh, the only time I've ever found teaks. I found them here, and I found the red diamond pair so, at this store. So we'll see. Wish us luck and wish like prayers to our wallets. Send a prayer to my credit card. Yeah. All right. Fingers crossed. This is my weird way I cross my fingers. Fingers crossed that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm weird. I do the fingers crossed the wrong way. How do you do that? Which Remember, do you I put up like my middle finger. <laughs> oh, no. I'm weird. Anyways, <laughs> turnstile number two. I like the sign. It looks like a movie theater. Well, what do we have in their shoe case? I see Jimmy Choo, Louboutin, two pair actually, maybe even three, YSL, even some Chanel. But the prices are a little steep. Then I was looking at some of the regular section shoes and I didn't really find anything in this aisle, but luckily this store has them spread out all over on top of every single aisle, so there's a lot of shoes to look through. These stores can be a little inconsistent. For example, Levi's at this location are $50. Like what? I moved on to the dresses because I love that section at this location. And third one that I spotted was an acne dress. The price was a little steep for how basic it was, but it was still cool to see acne outsourcing. Right behind the acne was Tadashi Shoji, then Dion Von Furstenberg, all kinds of bougie brands. That's exactly what I expect from this location, honestly. Here's another good one. So this is a Victoria by Victoria Beckham dress. Nothing to do with the Target line. This was new with tags, retailed for almost $800, and they had a great price on it here. It was 67, but it just won't make enough profit to make that price worth it. Our second Amanda Uprichard find of the day. This one's the older label and still a pass from me. Also, this Rails swim cover romper dress was really cute, but I like to do the flannels instead. We had an Oscar de la Renta pink label piece, which was really adorable as well. This was marked pretty good, but I just didn't want to pay that much for it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I spotted this Cleo Bella eyelet jumpsuit. It was really, really cute and new with tags. It was priced at 45, and if it was a bit lower, I maybe would have considered it. But for 45, the comps just weren't making that worth it, so I passed on this as well. I loved the print of this dress. It had animals of all kinds, birds, cranes, little squirrel things, and it was by Peruvian Connection. The price was too high, but I totally would have loved to grab this. I really liked this net effect to this Moulinet Sewers dress. They had it marked as designer because they do that with a lot of the Anthro brands. And then shockingly, they actually had a vintage Jams World piece. They usually do not carry vintage, so it was kind of cool to see. I love selling J. Crew Universal Standard, but this was a smaller size and a bit too expensive, so I passed on this. Finally, a dress I'm actually going to be getting, and this is my first time finding Print Fresh. Ryan's found it a couple times, and I've always been so jealous. I love their prints. If it was a bit cheaper, I probably would have picked up this Everlane. I liked the material that it was, but for the price they had it at, which was $20, I didn't want to grab it. And this Ted Baker was a great price at only $12.50, but the non-printed Ted Baker does not do nearly as good as the floral printed stuff, so I had to skip it. But I did get this Gal Meets Glam, and it was only freaking $12.50 new with tags. I haven't even still looked up. If it's a blogger favorite, it doesn't matter. I'm getting it either way. This is one of those free people pieces that you don't even Google, you just pick it up even if you have to pay up for it. I can guarantee that this dress situation goes for over $100 on Posh, and it was only $20 after the 20% off. Still haven't Googled it, but still not mad about grabbing it. Well, I did find a Rothy. It was not in the best shape. It was a tiny size. It was way overpriced at 52, and Rothy's kind of sit now. So a triple, quadruple, no. I did kind of like this Fossil Roadrunner purse. It was really, really cute, but I really just don't like to pay probably over $8 for a Fossil. So even at 20, I had to pass. Okay, when I said this turnstile is fancy, I meant they are fancy. Let's see what they have behind the counter. This Ula Johnson set was absolutely adorable. It was $210, which is crazy out of the budget, but beautiful and stunning to see it a turnstile nonetheless. This beautiful Love Shack fancy skirt was new with tags, and I think it was, yeah, $395. They had it for $106. 80 minus the 20% isn't that bad, but a little too expensive, and this beautiful Christian Dior robe. This, I'm kind of shocked they didn't have behind the counter in that same rack. It is this stunningly, stunningly beautiful red floral with the black lace detail. Allison Olivia dress is $106. It was new with tags for $350, which is interesting. Then another item that I'm kind of surprised isn't behind the counter again. It is this ML Monique Lulier dress. It is $156 because it was new with tags for $395, which is about the same price as the Love Shack Fancy. So either way, I am very happy that I got to see it. It is a beautiful piece. This is something else that I was just really upset that it was so expensive. It was this Anthropology tank top. It was $23 before the discount, but I just loved this. It was so soft and so comfortable. This is a pair of little Tory Burch golfing shoes. I love the little details on these. I thought they were so cute, but again, out of the budget. This is one of the only items I actually ended up purchasing from the second turnstile. It was this beautiful mage black blazer for $18 minus the 20%. I really liked that it had this little like black kind of a satiny finish on it. I thought this was really cute. If this blazer gets marked down one more time, I probably will buy it. This is a beautiful Dries Van Noten lavender purple blazer. It was marked down from 340 to 155. I love it. This was a stunning pair of free people shoes going with the theme of very cute, but not in the budget. Okay, here is kind of my little catch up after looking through this row. It was super busy, so I couldn't do little updates. This is Tyler Bow. I know he can be kind of expensive retail, but I just didn't see this top having a whole lot of resale for the 18, so I did leave that one behind. 
This is a really good brand. It's the Jet Set Diaries. This was only $11.50, but unfortunately, the closer I looked at the front, there are some really nasty grease stains on it, so I really didn't want to try to wash it. This I did end up getting. This is a Reese piece, if you can kind of like see it under the hanger. I absolutely love this. It was only $16 minus the 20%. I absolutely love this lace detail. I think this would be good for like a Memorial Day picnic or like a summer event kind of a situation. Here is that mage blazer one more time. This, I actually found out, is an anthropology top. The brand was Waverly Gray, and if you find this in the bins, it is kind of like a good little bread and butter anthropology brand, but unfortunately I was not going to pay over probably five or six bucks for that. This brand actually just turned out to be a boutique. I thought it was kind of cute. I like the little like tie front style, and I thought the little floral embroidery was on it, but it just turned out to be nothing. These Betsy Johnson shoes were definitely probably the favorite thing that I saw from this turnstile today, and probably all of today. This was definitely like the most beautiful. I loved them. The comps just really weren't there, and they were kind of expensive, unfortunately. I did really like this Cory Lynn Coulter top, which I don't honestly remember if she was only an anthro brand or if she was a brand that was really popular at anthropology. Either way, this really cute little tropical lace top was just a little out of my budget. This Eberge swim cover, which if you don't know the brand Eberge, they are a very expensive lingerie kind of like resort company. Their lingerie does much better than this kind of stuff. This was a little pricey at $23, but I would have been very excited to find that in the bins. I was absolutely head over heels, no pun intended, obsessed with these Dolce Vita shoes. They were this beautiful, kind of like a vachetta leather, honestly, with these beautiful leather soles for $23, which is just a little bit more than I was willing to pay. I guarantee you, back in the day, I would have definitely paid $14 for this t-shirt, but today, they unfortunately don't really do that good, so I did leave it behind. I did find this really adorable pair of Everlane sandals in this kind of like khaki, almost like a lavender color, but they were $43, which is definitely out of the budget. And then this really adorable little like nautical J. Crew sandal that was $27. Okay, after looking through some of the stuff, I did find a couple of little keepers. This is an adorable little Tumi travel case. I did find two bags of this beautiful Venetian candy. Unfortunately, the blue one did have some broken ones, so I did put that one back. The green one did come home with us. It is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. My mother actually has some of this stuff, so I'm now I'm excited to be able to put some of it in my new little house. Here is that mage blazer one more time. Definitely a get. This little Reese top. It does have a little bit of a makeup stain, I'm realizing, on the inside, but that's no big deal. This, I have been looking for a blue vase from forever. Here's a good find by a pretty obscure brand, though we've had it on a bolo before. It's called Porto. It's kind of a lag and look brand, and it's very expensive. Plus, this is plus size, so I was excited to find that. And here's another inconsistency with pricing between stores. This is Spanx, and I know it's new with tags, but 43 is so much more than 11.50. At stores in bougie areas, I basically Google anything that seems even slightly substantial that I don't recognize, like this called Mass Cob. Never heard of it before, seemed kind of interesting and was a good price. Looked it up, and sure enough, it's a really expensive bougie lady brand. Even a top is almost $300, and the real real even takes it, so I'm gonna be picking that up. New Bolo brand, I guess. Similar situation, a couple pants down. This was a pair of pants by a brand called Estelle and Finn. It was only $8, it had been marked down, and it kind of, once again, just seemed kind of substantial, so I looked her up too. This is another expensive, most likely, leg and look brand. These might be from our leg and look boutique, not sure. This is odd. This is the same brand as that new Anthro Olari pair of pants I found at the last shop. I had never heard of the brand before. Now I've seen it twice. I love that these are called Flofers. They're floating loafers. They're like croc loafers. How iconic is that name? <laughs> these are like space athleta. Like if you're going to Mars, you probably should bring this pair of athleta leggings. Well, I kind of did Ryan dirty and I checked out the swim before he could get there. I found this nasty gal set with lemon print, $9.50 for both pieces. That's gonna be a yes. I did grab this Urban Outfitters one piece that's new with tags for him in case he wanted it, though he ended up not wanting it. I think it was just a little too expensive to be Urban Outfitters. I almost even considered it myself. It was really, really cute. 
Then I also found this Victoria's Secret set. This was priced up quite a bit, and I noticed later that it was new with tags, which solidified my decision even more. But how cute is this strawberry print? I had to pay the 18, especially getting both pieces. This was a J. Crew swim set. Once again, priced together. Once again, a little more expensive, but this was a Liberty London J. Crew print. Y'all know how I feel about that collection already. This set is a super expensive brand called Lenny. This is my weird camera trick to show you. L-E-N-N-Y, really expensive swimwear. Maybe it'll be on a bolo in the future, but write it down right now or look it up, it's really expensive and it was a great price here. And then I picked up this Melissa Odebash to offer to Ryan, but he didn't want this either. Before leaving, we quick checked out the sandals wall and we found a few cute pair, but only one to pick up. So this pair of Zara had really cute toe loop details, but they were a bit worn and they were just made of rubber. So we both thought that those weren't worth picking up. Also, we found this really cute pair of pastel monogram coach slides. Again, a little too pricey for what they are. This was a new brand to me called Marion Park. They retail for like 500. Number two is done. Yeah, I feel like I definitely was a little bit pickier and I didn't spend anywhere near $180. <laughs> um, another very successful trip because I definitely did spend close to mine. I spent 152 or 154. I didn't really find that much. I think a lot of the stuff that I was finding was amazing, but it was still really expensive. Yeah, even I, with definitely, the 20%. I definitely found some stuff out of my price range also, but they I- had some beautiful stuff though. I shockingly found swim and I thought Ryan was gonna be pissed at me for, I for going at the swim. love the swim section here though. It is really good. So that's the not fun part about arbitrage and consignment shopping is my total now for the day is like $350. I think I'm at 225, what's 186 plus 47? Close. Like, two, yeah, 230. So yeah, that's the not fun part. Whereas like the bins I can spend all day and it's probably gonna cap out at mm -hmm. about like 120 at the most. But a bunch of really good stuff again, like the last stop, I'm sure this stuff will sell in like two months mm -hmm. at the longest, all of yeah. it. So we're gonna go to the last one, which like we said, just a reminder, it's the closest one to us, but mm -hmm. it's the one that we frequent a lot. We literally may not get anything, but we're gonna look. And if there is something, obviously we're gonna buy it anyways. I know ours has been marking stuff down half off quite mm -hmm. a bit, but I'm also gonna pick up a check so let's see let's see how much of my money so i've spent 350 let's see how much my check is and how much i actually end out the day can you imagine if you like net zero that you insane. net neutral that would be That'd so be nice yeah uh. actually they have a thing with the turnstiles that they can call each other and move your credit around. That's a hassle. Um, but yeah, I haven't been making them do that. I, Money's gonna be coming out of the account one way or a token, Yeah, you and know? we're it's going fine. to the one where I can sign anyways, so. Yeah. Half the stuff at that one is like mine. Yeah. So that's why I won't mm -hmm. be buying stuff either, but let's go to the last one. Yeah. Well, we've arrived. The honey baked ham. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, so they actually close in like under 45 minutes. Maybe even 30. I'm trying to remember what time it was. So we need to hustle. So there definitely probably won't be as much footage here, but let's at least get my check and look at some stuff. Well, last stop, and here I am thinking I've seen everything they have here, but I found this J. Crew and Liberty blouse. I am thinking that this is gonna be a grab. This Bowden was really cute and only 350. I probably wouldn't have paid too much more than that, but 350 is a deal. Another J. Crew Liberty. This is from the newer collection. This is a total, total grab. I love this. These Free People sandals were super cute, but they were a small size, and I offered them to Ryan, and he didn't want them, and I decided to pass as well. This was another pair of J. Crew. Super cute. This one's a 12, and it's J. Crew collection. And this one's also a 12, and you can just tell it's newer. I love the cotton floral J. Crew pieces. And at our third and final turnstile, I really only had time to look through the dresses, so I did end up finding this really beautiful Arata Silent Journey dress. It was only $12.20, but the comps on this piece look to be about $60 to $80, and I think I'm gonna wait to see if it goes on a bigger sale. This was a beautiful piece. I kind of had a little heart attack because I thought it was going to be main label Marnie. It is Marnie in Uniqlo, but either way, it is this stunningly beautiful little like mix matched, fun, a little cutesy print dress. And I literally couldn't get over this Ann Taylor sleep set. I don't know what about it. The green was super beautiful. I love the pink. I think the flowers are super cute. I love this, but for 27 bucks, it's a little much. 
And look at these. What do we think they are? Yeah. Crocs. They are Crocs. They look like Spiris. <sighs> and we're done. And we are done. That was a lot of shopping. We, Three stores in one day um, is a lot. And so all of these opened at noon and we got there at like 1230 at the first one, Ooh. even maybe earlier. And we they all, the they, all for the longest. they all close at six and we're leaving and it's like 550 because they were kicking us out. They were She's booting there. everybody out. So I was you like, okay. Go. But it's got a couple things. Time. My total at the last place was 40. But at this one, like I said, I had a check. So I had a check for 190 ready for me. So I just used the like 45 from that. So I got a check for 150. And I did not buy anything this time. I just wasn't seeing anything that was speaking to me. So I ended the day, I'd spent like in the red about 200, but tons and tons mm -hmm. of super, super oh, good inventory. Love. So I am not mad yeah. in the slightest. I feel like I paid up for some stuff, but I think I paid up for some good stuff. And mm -hmm. I think it's gonna pay off, which is nice. I even learned a couple brands, which is yes. kind of shocking. We love. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed doing this with us. This is we fun. have had requests for this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we do consignment shop like quite frequently. So if you guys want to see this at some point in the future, definitely let us know. Yeah. But also let us know what is the next thrift with us you want to see. Regular thrift stores, consignment, bins, yes. what's your favorite? Oh. Let us know. What's the vibe? And we will see you guys on Thursday for the Battle of the Bucks. <gasps> so we're quite excited about that. Again, it's surprising. Ooh, I almost made it through this video without yawning. Oh, anyway, we'll see you Thursday. Goodbye. Goodbye.